Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another Speed Build Saturday. Today we're building in Mount Komorebi and I'm actually building a sort of modern condo that I found online. I was actually only able to find one photo of this house, so the floor plan is actually mostly guesswork, but I honestly think it turned out pretty well for what I had to go off of, and that photo is right here, and as you're going to see, I had a lot of trouble figuring out exactly what wood I wanted to use on the outside because none of them were really matching up with what I was trying to do. And at the end of all the swatches, I end up going with the spooky pack wood because it's honestly the only wood I found that had enough texture on it for what I was going for. And here I was really trying to figure out how to mimic that cool walkway design that was in the photo um, on this teeny tiny lot, which I struggled with a lot. Started off with debug objects and then finally figured out that there were some floor tiles that worked better for everything. As you can see, I really did try to get these debug tiles to work because I just wanted that little bit of green peeking out between them like in the actual photo and I even leave it alone for a second to do the fence before I decide no it's not really working for me and I end up changing it back to the floor tiling that I had before and it does end up looking a lot nicer with it in the end so eh, the struggle is real. With the doors and windows all placed on the outside, I move inside just to put the couple of doors upstairs along with the stairs between the two floors before uh, heading back outside and doing the tiling on that little rooftop patio. And then I've really been into doing this lately with the floor tiles. I flip each one of them around in the corners so that it looks more like one contiguous square than just planks going from one direction to the other. And I think it looks a lot nicer in some builds. With the last of the outdoor lights placed, we can go ahead and move inside and start working on the kitchen, which I tried to make a little bit more open, but I wanted it to also have a breakfast nook, so I tried really hard to get it to the point where these counters wouldn't stick out through the wall or through the column, but I honestly don't even know if that column ends up in the final build. I 
do end up changing the kitchen around just one more time after this to make the space for a closet, which I imagine would be a pantry in a house so small because you're going to need somewhere to store your food. struggled for just a little while in this kitchen before I ended up going back to the tried and true parenthood tile for the walls. Finishing up in the kitchen, I move over to the dining and living room combo to throw down the table, make sure I have all my sizing right before I finally settle on a TV and then start to build a customized TV stand that I am thinking looks pretty cute at the end. It's got a lot of spaces for like personality for your Sims. So if they've got awards and stuff, you can put them there. I just put in some standy stuff that I thought looked nice. I actually end up changing up the whole color scheme because of this cute little shelf with the tree on it. I just liked the swatch in black better, so it actually ends up being a little bit more modern Japandi sort of vibes in the living and dining room, even though there's still some traditional decorations. putting shoji around that entire wall on the inside I actually took these uh, wall decorations outside just to give that bottom layer a little bit more texture and something a little bit more fun to look at and I also realized that I forgot the platform trim so we might as well get that in there too. The dining room and living room all swatched up and everything. I do change a couple swatches in the kitchen uh, before moving to the final two rooms on the first floor, which is a bathroom and then a teen's bedroom. And I actually end up basing this teen's bedroom off of this carpet and this carpet alone. It was just super modern and I loved the colors on it, so I really try to stick with it in here. Luckily, I was able to find a lot of decor that I liked for the whole design of this room. Uh, I do end up removing that nail polish because I don't really like to make gendered bedrooms so much. I like any sim to be able to live in them because I just think it's a better use of the space.
with the teens room properly cluttered up, we can move on to this kind of small closed in feeling sort of bathroom, but as closed in as it feels, uh, the walls in this bathroom actually make it possible for your Sims to both go to the bathroom and have another Sim showering at the same time without either one getting embarrassed. And with all the stand-in lights replaced with their proper versions, I hop into live mode just to make them a more warm kind of tone to make the home feel really warm and inviting. And I'm really happy with how the master suite turned out in this house, even though it may have taken me an extra minute to get it done, but that's okay because it gives me a second to explain that for the final bedroom, the bathroom, and then for that dope little patio space, uh, my video recording actually got corrupted somehow and I don't have it, so I'll make sure to give it some extra love in the tour. And here we are in game, and as the title suggests, I kind of just wanted an excuse to use this cute little maple in the front, so I switched my build file to fall to match with the kind of theme I'm going for for October. And then if we start moving through, you'll see that there are a ton of planters on the ground that you didn't get to see me place because of my corrupted video. Going in through the front door, we come into the entryway that leads to the combined living and dining space with the customized little TV stand and then this cozy table to stay nice and toasty in the winter. And then moving along, we go to this really nice, warm, orangey kind of kitchen. Moving away from the kitchen, we are going to hit up this really tiny bathroom that, like I said, does feel a little bit claustrophobic when you look in here, but it's really useful for when you've got multiple sims that aren't in romantic relationships living in the same house. And then moving right along to the teen's bedroom, I really love how this room turned out. And as you guys will come to find, even when we get out of autumn, I am quite a fan of orange. And I just really like the stark contrast that this room ended up with. But with that, that is the end of the first floor. So I'll go ahead and get us upstairs. In the upstairs landing, we actually have like a communal little office space for everybody to use in the house. So the kids can troll the forums, mom can write a book, and then we can move right along to this adorable children's room that you guys didn't get to see me build. Now this room has some major autumn vibes about it. I almost never use this gradient wallpaper, but with the stickers and stuff, I just love how this room turned out. Master Suite ended up being pretty minimal when it comes to decoration just because it is a kind of small bedroom but then again they get the perks of having their own bathroom just right through their own private door and who wouldn't love that? And we have one final bathroom that is admittedly a little bit more open than the one downstairs just because I needed to have a shower tub combo if I wanted to have toddlers in this house. But moving along to the party patio outside, I just love how this space turned out. Just, I imagine bringing Sims here and having a night full of memories and there's something most Sims can enjoy up here from dancing to mixing up a drink to maybe even playing a game of chess. But that is the build completed. So it will be on the gallery as a modern maple condo. And if you guys liked it, leave a like. Uh, comment down below with something you'd like to see me build next, subscribe if you're new, and then as always guys, have a good day and I'll see you later.